This video is all about training zones, what they are and what makes them so important for us as endurance athletes. If you're new here, hello. My name is Jack and I am here to help you become an endurance athlete. So this video is based on the work of Dr. Inigo San Milan and the video that he made on his YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it in the description. If you've never heard of him, he is a professor at the University of Colorado School of Medicine, as well as a coach for professional cyclist Tade Pagacar. And my goal with this video is to take all of the key information from his research, distill it and repackage it so that it's as easy as possible for us to understand and use. But for any of this to make sense, we have to define some important concepts. If you're unfamiliar with training zones, I like to think of them as ranges of intensity that we can target in our sessions to train different aspects of our fitness. Some systems have five zones, some have six, some even have seven. The one we're going to be talking about today has six. The reason that I love Dr. San Milan's model is that it just makes sense. It's not some formula based on a random percentage of a metric. It is a description of which energy systems we're using at each intensity level. And for me, understanding the reasoning behind why I'm doing what I'm doing is so, so important for me to keep doing it. I don't really like to blindly listen to authority, right? I want to understand what I'm doing and why. Let's start with some simple definitions. So in order for our muscles to contract, they need energy in the form of ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. And depending on the intensity of the exercise that we're doing, our body uses different fuel sources and systems to generate the ATP for muscle contraction. And our two main fuel sources are glucose and fat. Fat is a very, very energy dense fuel source, but it burns relatively slowly. Glucose is not as energy dense, but it is a super fast fuel, meaning that our body can synthesize or create ATP very, very quickly when using glucose as its fuel source. And out of these two fuel sources, glucose and fat, we use way, way more glucose. So when our body is using glucose to create ATP, in that process, lactate or lactic acid is always produced. When we're using only a little bit of glucose, we only produce a little bit of lactate. And at lower intensities, our body is able to clear the lactate so it doesn't actually build up. Okay, now let's get into the zones themselves. Starting with zone one. This is known as the recovery zone. So in zone one, the intensity is very, very low. And because of that, our muscles don't need that much ATP. So we use a little bit of fat, a little bit of glucose, and in the process of using that glucose, we create only a little bit of lactate. In this zone, we're primarily using slow twitch muscle fibers. So moving on to zone two, Dr. San Milan calls this the fat max zone because it is the zone where we use the most amount of fat for ATP production. We're still using way more glucose than fat, but as you can see on this graph, we use the most amount of fat for fuel in zone two. Here, we're still using slow twitch muscle fibers, but because the exercise intensity has increased, we need more fuel for ATP production. Okay, so moving on to zone three, this is known as the transition zone because it marks the switch between using slow twitch muscle fibers in zone two and using fast twitch muscle fibers in zone four. We also see a shift from using fat and glucose in zone two to only relying on glucose in zone four. This transition occurs because as I mentioned earlier, fat isn't a fast fuel. 
With the increased intensity of zone three, we need a lot more ATP for muscle contraction. And fat just isn't fast enough. So our body primarily uses glucose here. Let's move on to zone four. This is known as the lactate threshold. At this point, we're solely using glucose for ATP synthesis, and we're only using fast twitch muscle fibers. Because of the much higher intensity of zone four, we need a lot of ATP, which means we need a lot of glucose. And with that increase of glucose utilization for ATP synthesis comes a large increase in lactate production. We can only sustain efforts in zone four for around an hour. Zone five is our VO2 max. At these intensities, we can only sustain efforts of between three to five minutes. It's called VO2 max because this is our maximum aerobic capacity. We rely heavily on glucose for ATP synthesis and create a lot of lactate in the process. Finally, we're in zone six. This is our anaerobic zone. We can only hold efforts at this high of an intensity for 20 to 30 seconds max. At this high of an exercise intensity, even glucose doesn't create ATP fast enough. So we use ATP that's stored in our muscle cells. So why are training zones so important? By understanding which system we're using in each training zone, we can plan specific sessions and workouts to target those energy systems. By training in zone two, for example, we're able to boost mitochondrial function and lactate clearance. Whereas zone four is where a lot of competitions are won. It's kind of the turbo zone. So that is what training zones are and what makes them so important as endurance athletes. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please like, comment, and subscribe. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.